Thanks for joining me again as we look back at another great classic film. This is a film noted for the brilliant performances not just of its lead, but its large supporting cast. It has great location shooting and takes particular advantage of the cold weather at the time of filming, which gave the cast a hard and windblown look. It was nominated for and won many awards and accolades and helped to resurrect the career of a great director who had suffered reputational damage. It is On the Waterfront from 1954. In 1951, playwright Arthur Miller wrote the first version of a script called The Hook, which Elia Kazan wanted to make, and talked to Harry Cohn at Columbia Pictures. Cohn agreed in principle, but was concerned about the portrayal of corrupt union officials. When Cohn asked that the antagonist be changed to communist, Miller refused, and after Kazan's friendly testimony before the House Un-American Activities Committee, he refused to work further with Kazan, so was replaced with Bud Schulberg. Inspired by a Pulitzer Prize winning series of articles, Crime on the Waterfront, by Malcolm Johnson, Schulberg had developed an original story with Robert uh, Sidemack um, in 1948 uh, that focused on union violence and corruption amongst longshoremen within a wider environment of corruption, extortion and racketeering on the waterfront. The leading characters were based on real people, uh, Terry Malloy on longshoreman and whistleblower Anthony de Vincenzo, Father Barry on Waterfront Priest, Father John M. Uh, Corridan, uh, and Johnny Friendly is variously cited as being based on Albert uh, Anastasia, uh, Michael Clemente, and Joseph P. Ryan, all men who controlled New York's waterfront through the dock working unions at various times. Ilya Kazan was reluctant to work with Daryl F. Zanuck after his experience on Man on a Tightrope, and after Zanuck became fixated on a widescreen Technicolor picture and expressed very little interest in the story. Kazan and Schulberg met with independent producer Sam Spiegel, who, finished, who finalised a deal with Columbia. The part of Terry Malloy was originally written for John Garfield, but he died at just 39 before casting began. Marlon Brando was Kazan's next choice, but refused the role because of Kazan's friendly testimony before HUAC. Um, so the part was offered to Frank Sinatra, who accepted on a handshake, but without a contract. In the background, Spiegel tried to interest Montgomery Clift in the role before Paul Newman and John Woodward were screen tested. This convinced both Kazan and Spiegel that Brando was perfect for the role, and following further discussions, he signed. Sinatra was furious and demanded to be cast as waterfront priest Father Barry, only Carl Morden had already signed uh, on for that particular role. The role of Terry's brother Charlie was originally offered to Lawrence Tierney, but when Tierney asked for too much money, it went to Rod Steiger. Steiger later said that he would not have appeared in the film had he known about Kazan's uh, testimony before the HUAC. Lee J. Cobb, who had known Kazan since the 1930s and had been an uh, unfriendly witness at his own HUAC uh, appearance, was cast as Johnny Friendly. After Grace Kelly turned down the role of Edie Doyle to make Rear Window, Rosemary Clooney, Elizabeth Montgomery and even Marie Saint were considered. Montgomery tested well but came across as too well bred for someone from Hoboken, with the role eventually going to Saint. Fred Gwynn, best known as TV's uh, Herman Munster, plays Slim Sekulovich and Martin Balsam can be seen as uh, Gillette, the secondary investigator for the Crime Commission. Local longshoremen were used as extras and former professional boxers Tony Galletto, uh, Tammy Moriello and Abe Simon played Johnny Friendly's heavies. Filming took place over 36 days across locations in Hoboken, New Jersey, including the docks, workers' slum dwellings, bars, uh, littered alleys and rooftops, as well as local church exteriors and interiors. Kazan felt uneasy while shooting on location near mafia-operated businesses and hangouts as local hoods were constantly watching and trying to intimidate them. Shot during one of the coldest winters in American history, Marlon Brando used a mobile heater between takes and everyone escaped inside when they could. As a result, the biggest problem Kazan had with his actors was getting them on set on time. In a nod to Father Corridan, uh, Carl Malden wore his hat and coat during filming. The taxi cab scene between Terry and Charlie, one of the most famous scenes in cinema, was improvised in parts, but the two actors largely stuck to Bud Schulberg's script. Legendary cinematographer James Wong Howe um, shot a number of sequences towards the end of filming when regular cinematographer Boris Kaufman was unavailable. From a budget of just under $1 million, the film went on to gross more than $10 million in its initial release. It received positive reviews with New York Times critic A.H. Weller calling the film an uncommonly powerful, exciting and imaginative use of the screen by gifted professionals. 
Martin Scorsese said of Brando's performance, everything that we know about the power of great screen acting relates back to him. When you watch his work in On the Waterfront, you're watching the purest poetry imaginable in dynamic motion. Kazan said, if there's a better performance by a man in the history of film in America, I don't know what it is. Al Pacino, Anthony Hopkins and Jack Nicholson have all described Brando's performance in the film as spellbinding. He was nominated for 12 Academy Awards, winning for Best Picture, Best Director, Best Actor for Marlon Brando, Best Supporting Actress for Eva Marie Saint, uh, Best Screenplay, Best Art Direction and Best Cinematography, as well as Best, e Best Editing. He was nominated for three BAFTAs, winning Best Foreign Actor for Marlon Brando. Ilya Kazan uh, collected a Director's Guild Award uh, for the film. Uh, he won four Golden Globe Awards, winning Best Motion Picture, Best Actor for Marlon Brando, Best Director and Best Cinematography. It was awarded Best Film of the Year by the National Board of Review. It won New York uh, Film Critics Circle Award for Best Film, Best Director and Best Actor, again for Marlon Brando. It won the OCIC Award at Cannes and won the Silver Lion and the Passanetti Award at Venice. Bud Schulberg won a Writers Guild of America Award. In 1954, uh, Cedar sued uh, Spiegel for copyright infringements and failure to acknowledge his con contribution to the original screenplay. He was awarded $100,000, but no screen credit. In 1955, Anthony DiVincenzo sued Columbia for a million dollars claiming Terry Malloy had been based on him without his consent. DiVincenzo had also been a boxer and had an enthusiasm for pigeons. He won a small out-of-court settlement. It is on a number of American Film Institute uh, lists, uh, is, is included in Roger Ebert's Great Movies list, has been selected for preservation in the US National Film Registry, and is one of the 1001 movies you must see before you die. Lots of good reasons to watch this film. The performances of Brando and all his supporting cast are phenomenal. The location shooting is interesting and really sets the mood of the film. It features so many memorable lines and scenes and it has a powerful ending. So what I suggest you do is that you go to our website, find our virtual screenings page, find the link to this particular film, click on it and watch it, uh, see what you think. And as always, we'd invite you to come back, let us know your thoughts about the film and whether you would recommend it for others as well. And then we're back in the not-too-distant future for our next classic films review. Catch you next time.